Hey guys, I'm Jota from 3DMA and welcome to our latest video, part 3 of the MAC-10 submachine gun series, where we are going to take a look at the texturing process in Substance Painter after doing our UV unwrapping in part 2. This will also be the last one of the series as the game ready model will be completed at the end of this video and we will be taking a look at final renders in Marmosel Toolbag. So after fixing our baking errors and making sure our UVs are as final as possible, we jump straight into it. I personally like to start my projects by adding some layers I always use and I keep as a smart material. In this particular project, I didn't add those until a bit further on. In these layers, I like to keep my ambient occlusion layer where I can kind of fake shadows and add a bit more depth to the model, as well as a sharpness and curvature layers that will help us bring those details up a bit, as well as highlighting the edges. After that, I usually start working on the most prominent material on the model, as this will give me the impression we've done a lot of progress in a little time and keep me motivated. In this case, we go for the metallic material that is all over the gun. I try to take this as close to the final result as possible, but I always end up coming back, especially after we have checked our textures in our preferred rendering software. Which brings me to my next point. Something I always try to do in my projects is to open Marmoset as soon as possible, uh, or any other real-time engine uh, you can find up there, like Unreal or, or whatever, uh, as soon as possible so I can start comparing the results between Painter and these other softwares, as most of the time there could really be a big difference in visuals. You will see me constantly going back and forth between the two to check the improvements and errors. When I'm happy with the color and everything else, I just go back to Painter and I start working on my next piece. Something that I always try to remember when working on game ready assets, especially those that come from real objects like in this case, is to try to keep everything as close as possible to the real reference, but always exaggerating it a little bit. Especially in the roughness channel, this will bring a lot of life to your props. Grab as many references as possible, not only for the assets that you're trying to recreate, but also other pieces that might have similar materials like different rust and scratches and wear, as well as renders from other artists that you might like and take in a look and try to break down how they created these assets and these textures. I cannot stress enough how important it is to take as much references as possible and spending your time scouting in the internet for those two. I also wanted to mention real quick uh, that we have recently opened a new store on ArtStation. Uh, we had one before in CU Trader and now we are um, just doing a new one. The one on CU Trader will, will still be there so if you want to buy our assets like this one by the way, this Mac 10 model will be over there, I'll link it in the description. Um, so if you want to get any of these assets you can do that in both uh, websites now. We're not removing anything from anywhere, we're just adding a new option for you guys so you can um, purchase from from this one if you prefer that. Um, anyways, I'll shut up now and, and let, you, let you enjoy the video.
So if you've made it this far to this series, I wanted to thank you uh, for spending some time with me and trying to figure this out. As I'm starting to making these YouTube videos, but this is a new experience for me and I'm trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. So I would really appreciate uh, comments or any questions you might have uh, down below so I can get feedback from you guys and, and hear from you and whatever you have to say so I can keep doing these videos and improving them. So again, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.